What's up to all the million dollars worth of game yes. listeners out there? If it's million dollars worth of game you're watching, if it's Gilly on Sports you're watching, if it's Adventures you're watching, if it's Where's Wallow we're watching, no matter what you're watching on right. Million Dollars Worth of Game do Network, these three things. what you need to do, you need to like, subscribe, and share. Like, subscribe, and share. Like, subscribe, share. Matter of fact, four. Like, subscribe, share, comment. Mm. Like, subscribe, share, and comment. Right. I'm talking about share with all your friends, but you gotta subscribe so you get the notification. We have a lot of big things coming. No, we got the biggest. The biggest things coming. I'm telling you stuff. You and you want to be able to get notifications. What you need to do is subscribe. Also, check out the merch. We got merch all going on. Hit the link. Check out the merch. Buy a ticket to the. There's a lot of stuff going on. Me and I was Gilly the game Fest. universe. Gilly Fest is coming. It's coming. Gilly Fest Part Two. Shh, tell you. Tell but right now, so quick. Shh. December eighth. Gilly and Wallo knockout. Knockout party. Get your tickets. Get your tickets. It's just like that. Right. It's going down December 8th. Gilly and Wallo knockout party. We got DK. We got a bunch of fights. Meatball rumbling. We got Goofies. We got White Dolomite. We, we got a bunch of people rumbling. We got people South Philly versus North Philly. We got Delaware versus, versus Philly. We got Jersey versus Philly. Big man is going down. Yeah, come on. Get I'm on. getting in there. No, I don't see. Yeah, that shit look like going down to some baby. Come on. Lock it up. Get 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 just like that, right? Listen, man, you see what's going on, man. I'm with the one, the only Gary V. Where's Wallow? We're in New York City. We're at this great office. Listen, man, we're going to get into some real shit today. You know, Gary's not bullshit. I'm not bullshit. He don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck. And we're going to talk about real life stuff. Gary, what is a brand? What is a brand? What is a brand? It's reputation. It's what people think. It's what people feel when they hear something. And obviously that we think about that from a, a closed standpoint, but it's about, I just told you right before we popped off, Madison Square Garden and the Knicks versus America. Yes. Those were two brands I debated to where to put my office. He rocks in with a Philadelphia hat. I literally felt something right away because I've mm. always felt like Philly was actually more New York than New York, especially as this island's gotten real rich. So brand is what people on the other side feel about something. It's reputation on a personal level and on a product, it's is this something I want to be associated with because I like it or I feel a certain way about it. When you was building your brand, who was the team players? Who, who, how did you pick your team? Of the people that you need, how did you build your infrastructure to build the brand that, you was, that it became today from the ground level? This isn't, that's, oh, I like this question. So it's funny where my brain went. The first thing that mattered to me is that I had no team for as long as humanly possible. I think, you know, we got, well, let me phrase. I got lucky because the world of building a brand on the internet happened when I was grown. I was 30 years old before I ever made a video in my life. Mm -hmm. These kids don't have that opportunity. All, every 13 year old is now thinking about that day one. Every human that is under 20 years old right now is actively being a human and being the PR person of themselves. They live in a different world than we grew up in. So for me, I got lucky. And I don't like throwing around that word because yeah. that's what losing players try to throw at winners. So mm -hmm. I, 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 yes. use luck. Yes. I use luck very carefully. But I did get fortunate, lucky, that all this popped off when I really knew who I was. You know, and, and things really didn't start happening to me until like 35, 38, 39. I was grown. And when I started realizing something was happening, first I did wine videos, then I did business. What was most important to me is I wanted to be in the dirt on everything. I didn't want to start hiring people, doing shit I didn't know how to do, because I knew that I wouldn't know how to judge them if I hadn't done it. Mm -hmm. And I learned that in my dad's liquor store. The reason I was a killer and built a huge business was I made ice, I stocked shelves, I worked the register. There was not one thing that anybody that worked for me was doing that I hadn't done. And so when I was building my brand, when I realized, wait a minute, something's happening, this Gary Vee thing can pop off, before I get everybody else to like come and team up with me, I want to understand first me, what the f do I give a f about? Because just I want to be famous and make money is not like, that's something that you do, but it's not who you are. And first I want to understand like why is this all happening? So a lot of why talk. And then the way I started building my team was hiring people to do that I wasn't good at or I didn't want to do. 
Mm. The first person I ever had to join me in my life was an admin. Administrator. That's right, because I had no clue how to manage my time. <laughs> like, I was trying to, I was saying yes to everything and then like nine people would show up at the same place and be like, I have a meeting with you. Be like, F-. You know, because yeah. I didn't write shit. Dad was all in the dome and I was good at it until it got so big, literally no bullshit. Three people would show up at, because I was building my brand at my dad's liquor store and then kind of starting to come over in New York, Jersey, New York, doing my thing. Literally one day, three people showed up on the same day and they're like, yo, I've got a meeting. Yo, I got a meeting. Yo, I got a meeting. And I remember I'm like, I'm losing. Because because I'm very compassionate and empathetic and I what I was most upset about was like, I don't want these people to feel like I'm big timing them. It's why I hate being late. Mm-hmm. Especially Back then I was just on the come up, especially now where I got a little something, I know what people are thinking, that I think my time is more valuable than theirs. So my biggest anxiety is being like two minutes late to a Zoom or something, because I hate that feeling. Anyway, regardless, first admin, because I had to organize my shit. And then, then I just needed someone to like help me. Andy K, who's doing my VFriends thing with me right now, came in as an intern, and was to help me with my book, Jab, 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 Right Hook, and I saw he had a little something and I was like, wait a minute, maybe I could do something. And I was like, you know what? I gotta make more content. And I started putting a little team together. Andy, then D Rock came, India, Steve Unwin, Zach Moy, Tyler. Like it just started happening. And so early, early on, it was somebody filming whatever I was doing, like Dustin's doing now. At the time, it was a show, like the Ask Gary V show. Like, I'll do a show on YouTube and put it out. And you guys and gals need to put it on YouTube, record it and put it on YouTube, and record it and put it on a podcast. And then it started building and then Instagram got more important. We started thinking about the, how to be great at Instagram, how to be great at it all. I was always doing me on Twitter. I was always doing the tweeting. I was always replying because I wanted to be in the trenches and the dirt. And so after admin, it became people to scale what I wanted to put in the world, the production team behind me living my life, which then cultivated in them literally following me 24 seven and filming me. I did Daily V for five years. That really took me to a different place. And so we keep building. I keep thinking about what am I not good at? What don't I like? When you start making paper and you can start deploying it, because the first seven, eight years of Wine Library TV and my brand, I didn't have the money to build a team. Yeah. So I had, of course, I had, I could be, I'm all strategist, yeah. I want to do everything and seem like, it was also I couldn't afford it. I couldn't, yeah, I had a Once money. you start affording it, everyone, where you got a little bit of paper, the biggest mistake people that start to pop off, get a brand deal, da, 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 is they want the money to buy like a this yeah. and a this. What they should be doing is taking that money early on and hiring the people to help them do what they the do great and to scale them. The kid that makes 200,000, which is a ton of money, year one when they popped, whatever it is, ads from TikTok and YouTube or a brand deal or whatever, speaking or whatever it is, that kid that goes from zero to 200K, he or she, don't forget it's 100K after taxes or 130, whatever it is, he or she always levels up lifestyle before they level up organization. Mm -hmm. That kid needs to realize, no, 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 at that 130, let me get in a 40K employee because that 130 can be 390 next year. But what they do is they buy shit. They buy shit. Mm-hmm. And I don't, listen, especially knowing your story, I grew up in very humble surroundings. I know all those kids. I was in that. I get when you never had it. Yeah. The f- thirst for it. I get it. My thing is you can have more of it if you can hold your breath. 12 more months. 12, I love you for that. But Another 12 team, months, 12 double months. it up. Another 12 months, triple up. Like, there's like, I said something once in one talk. I've never repeated it, but I'm gonna repeat it. There was some sort of thing and they were like, the kid was like, I want a Porsche. I'm like, I'm like, and it was talented. I was like, bro, you could buy the whole Porsche company. But the quickest way that that won't happen is you focusing on buying just one Porsche right now. Mm-hmm. People take chips off the table too soon, while. That's major. Yeah. And the re- and by the way, then that gets me into the real major shit. Why? Because they want to flex on someone. Flexing is everything. Because they because that girl hurt their they broke up with him, and so now he's gonna show he's paid and she fucked up. Yeah. Right. Because his teacher said he was gonna be a garbage man, and he's like, "Yo, fuck you, Mrs. Thompson." I got Because it. his daddy said you ain't never gonna amount to nothing, just like me, and he's like, "Nah, dad, fuck you. Look at my beamer. I get it. It's real." but it doesn't make it right. And this is why I love the world we live in. Us two, we didn't have platforms 30 years ago. 
Ain't no producers or Hollywood or the establishment putting us on to have a million people watch. No. But now us too, because of our, er, we earned our audience and the internet is democratized over the next however amount of time, millions of people over the next decade will watch this video. And one kid is gonna hear one thing out of our mouths knowing us and she or he's gonna be like, bet. And they will change. That's why church mattered. That's why parenting mattered. That's why scripture mattered. Like it's all communication and I continue to be compelled to do shit like this for one person on the other side of these cameras to be like, actually that's right. It. That's what I'm doing, and then getting the emails and the DMs or in the street and saying thank you. I live for that shit. I love that shit, and I'm happy to be with you because you do that shit as well. Which is why I don't know. I don't know if I've ever answered a text faster than the other day when you hit me. I walked out of a board meeting. <laughs> I walked out of a board meeting. I'm like, yo, and he's like, can we chop it up? I'm like, cool. You podcast? I'm like, a hundred percent. So thank you for having me. Now, what's the importance of diversifying your content? I love you for that. Clearly, maybe you've been, you know, I've been a little bit loud about this last 60 days. I'm writing a new book next year. It's going to be called Day Trading Attention. So I've been in it, trying to teach everybody how to win on every platform, TikTok, YouTube, because social media is the current place where attention is. If the metaverse comes, I'll be telling you what to do in those fucking headsets. I don't care where attention is. Cable TV 20 years ago, I'd be writing books like cable TV. 40 years ago, regular TV, regular TV. 80 years ago, radio, how to hack radio. Mm -hmm. I just want to know where the attention is. Spotify rap caviar is important today. It used to be called TRL. It used to be called The Source. It used to be like, I don't, Hot 97, I don't give a I'm agnostic to what platform has the attention. I just want to figure out where it is and want to be great at it. I don't hear social media. I hear TikTok. And then I double click. TikTok regular post, TikTok live. Different. I don't hear LinkedIn. Not just where you put your resume. No, no, I hear that's a social network. Double click. There's regular posts. There's video. There's written word. There's pictures. This is science. Mm-hmm. It's skill. So diversifying content is the number one reason that the person on the other side of this video right now is not popping off like she he wants to. People get stuck in ruts. They got something that worked for them or they're comfortable with and they're posting the same shit they posted five years ago on Instagram even though a ton of people are now on TikTok and Instagram, so there's less, it's different. Mm-hmm. And we've already seen all that shit from you. And they get tired. We all grew up with shit that was hot as And then three years later it was less hot because we got it. That's why Madonna was a beast. She was like, oh, I got you for four years. Now I'm, gonna, I'm a material girl. Now let me go on a cross and some dog. I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna be Vogue. And yep. she just kept mixing it the fuck up, right? We, kept right? we understand. And by the way, we see that all the time. Like, there's the people that have one pitch and they're hot for three years and we never heard about them again, right? And then there's people that are icons. Why? Because they diversified their content. That's major. Now, content. I always said to myself, do I got content or I'm just documenting my journey because I'm going to let this shit wherever you record it or not. So what's the difference between content and documenting the journey. Yeah. There was a moment, there was a kid in here, it was a big moment for me, it exploded for me. We were just chopping and I just, cause thank God I was filming back there and I just said, he's like, I don't know what to make. I said, document, don't create. Right? People have shoot days. I'm an influencer. I'm on today. I'm gonna make stuff. That's commercials. That's TV. That's fine by the way. That works for a lot of people. People like you and me and a lot of people out there, we should be documenting. Mm-hmm. Not creating. Right? We should, Because what we do is just who we are, it just, yeah. you know the best shit you ever said, the best shit I ever said, it's lost. I said some shit to my sister the other day, I'm like, mother I wish that shit was filled. Yeah. You know, like, like, it's, so, the difference is, n- not a lot, the key for everyone is to be self-aware of who they are. Some people, this is what blew me away, maybe this hit you too, as my life started changing, I started rubbing elbows with different kind of people, I'm like, yo, some of these comedians and actors like suck in real life. But in the context of doing it for film, they're beasts. And then, you, then I did enough TV and different shit. I'm like, oh, this shit's slow. You go do a movie, you're like, da da da. All right, back in the trailer for three hours. I'm like, yeah. this shit. Yeah. You know, for other people, we like it. Raw, clean, authentic, no bullshit, no f- with it. Like, that works for us. So for everybody on the other side, there's two groups 
There's the people that should do it the actors way. Like they should make yeah. studio proper. They need their no they need they need to memorize their lines and then there's us, more improv. We're more SNL than we are feature film. Right? Improv, live life on stage, you know, in the kitchen, around a dinner table, chopping, stoop life, it's that shit. And so, cool, like neither's better. The key is, does everyone on the other side of this know who they are and are they trying to force it? One of the things that was crazy, and this will make sense to you, when we grew up, being a rapper and athlete was like Pfft. We didn't grow up where the entrepreneur was Pfft. There was no me 30 years ago. It's crazy to me that kids look up to me because I didn't grow up having that. When I, saw, when I saw business people when I was coming up, like new, like successful business people, the face of that was Bill Gates, the nerdiest dude I'd ever seen in my life. I didn't want to be that, right? Yeah. You know, I, and so like, you know, what, what's just so crazy is shit ebbs and flows. So for me, the reason I tell people, be self-aware, figure out who you are, the world might come to you. I lived in an era where all my friends' parents told all my friends to stop playing video games. It's a waste of time. If one of those parents said, go all in, my homie might have been the Tony Hawk of video games. Do you understand that if somebody in the 80s or 90s had a parent that said, go all in, this is it? Go all in. And they just went all in. And when I say all in, get great at it, but also get loud about it. Try to be on TV, try to be in newspapers. They would have been the Tony Hawk of video games and they'd be getting paid unlimited amount was of crazy money, is that but their parents wanted them to be a doctor to get paid 200,000 a year. What's was crazy is my cousin, Jamal, he had gave me his GT Performer, right? I'm looking at Rad, you remember Rad? I'm riding around and I'm, I'm doing all these trips, myself up, trying to do shit that I don't know nothing about, but I'm like, damn. And for those who don't know, a GT Performer was like, did he, listen, you, this was the bike of all bikes. It was like what Trek is. A GT performer was on another level. Go Google that. This was. I'm telling. You, I had the the trick stand. It had everything on it. This was the bike of the bikes. So I got that. He gave it to me. He was like, "Here, man. I don't want." I said, "So I'm riding, I'm looking at red." <laughs> my my homie Saeed at the time. He had one. So we riding. We doing all this stuff. But it was like nobody encouraged. Before, that was like that was your time. That was like have fun. Don't take this serious. You're not going to be Tony Hawk. You're not going to be. Uh, uh, you know, all these Rob Dyrdek, you're not going to be nothing. We didn't have that. We didn't have the extreme sports. And then you look up years ago, I look up, I'm sitting in a cell, I'm looking on cribs. Hold up. Rob Dyrdek, this is his f-ing house? He got a dirt pike in the back? He got, di- you looking at, you remember they had all the extreme sports guys on f-ing cribs. And I'm like, he owned a mountain in Arizona? From riding a bike? Riding a dirt bike? We never knew this shit well, was going to happen. you know that the 1982 NBA Finals, the 1982 NBA Finals, finals Lakers Sixers, mm-hmm. did not, it, one of the games, I think game six, did not air in real time on television because that's where the NBA was. It was on tape delay. Damn. Now, the 10th man on an NBA team, just 40 years later, is getting paid 40 million a year because there's that much money in the NBA and there's only 15 players, so it's not like baseball and football. Yeah. The, like literally, if you're the ninth man on the Timberwolves in six years, you're rich as f- I'm talking 40, 50. You see some of the deals come. Dudes, I'm like, I follow basketball and you see five years, 140, you're like, who is that dude again? Who is he? I've never seen him. So like, so. What Nobody saying, bought his jersey. By the way, 1957, if you're a pilot, you're famous as f- an astronaut in 1970? You're f- is f- you're f- Kim Kardashian and The Rock and Kevin Hart in one. Sh- changes. Now, now you walk right by the pilots. Be you be in the airport. They be walking by. Nobody paying attention. They got their white shirts on. Co- they walking by. This is a dude that got your life in his Ready? Hands. I got another one. Like, Pilot used to be here. Cook used to be the help of the help of the yep. help. The chef is on the. Now the chef is famous as f- famous. And nobody. Pilot, we hate them. We're like, where were you? Yeah, you late. Look, right? Like, as soon like, as they come across the speaker, oh man, what the f- P- sh- sh- And this is why, why are we talking about this for the last five minutes? I have no idea what the f- you're into as you watch this. You might collect stamps because your great granddaddy did yep. and nobody has for the last 20 years, but you might be that person that gets us all onto stamps, right? You might, like, like shit changes. Yep. You might be from the Caribbean and your style of food is not popping here. Well, guess what? Nobody knew what the f*** 
Taco Bell was 40 years ago in America no. easier. And if you go way back, pizza and French, like people like pizza was like, yo, those are the foreigners trying to put us onto pizza. Now it's the, like, and by the way, Mexican food is like, like, and Mexican food and sushi, Japanese food, runs shit. non-existent it's running, in this country it's running years it now. Ago, runs it. So what I'm saying is, you can die on someone else's thesis mm-hmm. or you can die on your own. And with the internet and tick, you're one TikTok away. I saw some dude, cause I'm doing, looking at something, who makes animals out of cotton candy. Like he's a cotton candy artist. Like you know how it's He's cotton, killing it. 2.5 million followers, 50 million views. And I'm just like, this dude was making 500,000 a year on a couple cotton candy brand deals and a couple of cotton candy dude hoodies and he does cotton candy animals. Cotton candy. 30 years ago, that dude is getting paid $17 an hour at a carnival. Yeah. Shit's changing, don't miss your shot. Whatever you're about, be about that. Go hard at it for as long as you can. And then if you gave it a seven, 10 year try and it didn't work out, then you can get a regular job. Then you can fold it in. But like, people give up too soon and they're embarrassed of their interests. That's probably the best thing that happened in hip hop culture in the last 20 years. When we were coming up, if you didn't have Timbo's and yeah. a starter jacket, you, you'd have an auntie in the hood and claim you were from there because you visited her once yep. if you lived in a middle class neighborhood because everything was hard, 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 hard. Right? People used to, you know this, people made up where they were from. Yeah. Just people because, still do that shit though. You, right? Remember like people were like, yo, I'm from Crenshaw. I'm like, no, no, your aunt lives in Crenshaw. You visit her for a week in the summer. You live in a solid, solid suburban town in LA. But when you came to college, then you had to show that you were hard. That, like, it's crazy now. And it started to happen with like, I remember when Bentley with the fucking umbrellas. Yep. And I was like, something's happening, right? And then you, th- I mean, Yachty and Tyler the Creator, those dudes couldn't win in 94. Mm-hmm. Like you had to be one way, one way. One way. Now and it's, so now. It's wide I mean, open. It's wide open, you can do shit. Thank God, mm-hmm. thank God. People are always focused on what's worse, shit better. Go talk to your grandparents. Ask them if it's better or worse. Man, it's way better. Man, I, you know, I, I remember we didn't have no remote controls. You had to turn the TV. You had to turn it. You only had like three channels. You didn't have, like everything that is right now is like, when I got out of prison, I was like. It's a miracle. It was like. <laughs> it was game time because. Because to be able to walk around with a satellite in your pocket, first of all, listen. Supercomputer. Listen, you got a supercomputer in your pocket. You could travel the world with this. You could do everything. You could attach a debit card to this. You could buy anything. You could go anywhere. You get any information. I guess me and you can sit here right here today and say, you know what? Let's start a company. Call what? Look around. Just go have people looking around on the way. Go, go, Daddy. Look around. Get somebody. Yo, set the site up real quick. Get a landing page. Look and just have people looking. You know around. what's crazy? Dumb shit. Now it's zero dollars and zero cents. Even that costs nine dollars. Like, again, we got fortunate. We came from such humble beginnings. Like, I remember, like, in college, because I had a hundred dollar bill and we could buy a video game, I was like, Fuck Bill Gates? Yeah. With a hundo. Mm-hmm. Now, how much is this? Seven, six, five? How much is this? 1100? No, 1200. Whatever. 15, 1500. I don't know. Regardless, people are like, I'm poor. I'm like, you have a thousand dollar phone. Yeah. You bought seven dollar coffee. It got crazy. Mm-hmm. People got confused. Yeah. People don't realize the power of simplicity and humility and not needing shit. Every like, I just wish people would spend more time with 80, 90 year old people. I think people have got life a little confused right now. They're, they're so focused on what they don't have. They don't have the capacity for the gratitude of what they do have, starting with health. Because it's Number a re- regardless. I know unlimited people with 10 figures, 20 figures, 10, let me do it right, seven figures a million, eight figures, nine figures in their bank account and they've got 18 months to live and they're not happy. Mm-hmm. That hundo million ain't doing shit for you if you're f- wrapping it up because you're terminally sick. So every day you wake up and you and the people you love are good, you're good. And what, oh Gary, you don't get it, I get FOMO. Why, because somebody has a Lamborghini? The f- that got to do with you? They ain't got nothing to do with you. As, as if somebody else's joy and flowers are taken out of your joy or flowers. Mm-hmm. I hate that shit. And you, know, and you know what I believe in? I always believe in this and I tell people this. You got, and this is what I believe, 6, 12, 18, 24. 6 months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months. I don't care who you are, where you at. 
If you say, if I say to myself, you know what, I'm gonna take this, this sharpie right here, and I'm gonna be the number one seller of sharpies. I'm a whole, and I'm gonna just sell sharpies. All I'm gonna do is sell markers. It's either gonna be that six, that twelve, that eighteen, that twenty-four that I'm gonna be pop, and I'm gonna be known as the sharpie man all over the world. I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna document it. I'm gonna do my stuff, whatever. Everybody sit back, and what I got, what I call, you got jumpers out here. Oh, I'm, I'm selling Sharpie. Oh, but this dude's selling merch. That's popping. Let me jump over there. Oh, cannabis, oh, crypto, let me jump real over estate. There. Oh, let me. And, and what happened is the number one happened when your blessing come and arrive. Like here I come. I was waiting for you. You the fuck over there. Now here you go. You would have been the Sharpie man if you would just stuck to this. I believe and in it. What everybody else is doing and just said, and think about it. So many people waste so much time in 24 months doing a bunch of shit and jumped all over the place. If they would have stayed with one thing, lock that in. Got the finances, and then you know you can yeah. branch out. You know why? But nobody stayed there. You know why? Why? They're chasing paper. Yeah, that's the problem. The number one way to not have paper is to chase it. Mm-hmm. Real talk, because if you chase what you like and or what you know you're good at, self awareness of skill, or self awareness of joy, somebody might. Some people end up like me, where you're good at something and you love it. Right? Mm-hmm. Basketball, just because I'm looking at the garden and it's over your shoulder. It blew me away in my late 30s when I realized some athletes didn't give a fuck about the sport. I was like, what? I was like, because I love sports so much. Yeah. I was like, wait, you don't love playing ball? And, I, and the per, you know, these early meetings I had when I started figuring out, they're like, nah, it was just my way out. And I was like, damn, right. And you ain't good. And then I was like, oh, that's why some dudes are the most talented in the world and don't fuck make it because they don't love it and when people put Kobe or other people on a pedestal it's because that man loved it more than anything of course he when AI is like yo and then we're going to the club and Kobe's in the gym I know why the same reason I was in the office last night at 10 p.m. I'm not in the office last night at 10 p.m. because I need to make another dollar I'm in it because I like this more than watching Netflix or the game or chopping it up or getting drinks yeah. this is more fun for yes. me work and so when I think about the reason so many people don't achieve what you just broke down brilliantly is because the sole reason they did crypto, they did cannabis, they did sneakers, they did fashion, I got a t-shirt brand, I'm into real estate now, I'm an expert in this now, is they thought that this was gonna be the thing that got them the paper. Instead of realizing either pick something you love, you know how many people are a teacher, they love it more than life, and they're not gonna get paid like that. It's just no. not the way the system works. But what we don't talk enough about is how many human beings make 71,000 a year and are happy. We don't, we don't talk about it. And it's real and they're like, ah, oh, I hate when people in the comments are like, don't say that, you're trying to hold me down. Bro, first of all, I don't give a f-. Let's start with that. I'm not trying to hold you down or try to build you up. I can't control you. I don't know you. I'm just saying things that I'm observing I just know an obnoxious amount of people who are wealthy as fuck and miserable as fuck. And I know obnoxious amounts of people who do not have a lot of money who are smiling 360 days a year. Yeah. So can we just have that combo? Yeah. And, and, and I believe this. You make money changing the game, not following it. Yeah, I you think gotta, that's right. Like, and, and when you real, stay down, real money. Well, listen, real money. When you change the game, when you stick and say, you know what? Oh, nobody doing this. Because I remember when I came home from jail, I'm doing videos. And I would get calls from people. And I was living in my grandma's middle room, right next, I'm told the walls is thin, I'm right next to Nanny, twin size bed, same as in prison. What year and, is this? Uh, 2017, I come on February 18th, 2017. I'm ready to be home for seven years. So listen, I'm in there, and I'll never forget my grandma, she just, I know she thought I was crazy, because I used to be in there laughing. Because I used to get phone calls, and people send me messages, yeah, what's the name, was talking about you. They said you're crazy, running down the street, doing the videos and all that. And I'll be in there cracking up. And Nanny, like, I'm just, I'm watching, I'm laughing at something, Nanny. And she didn't understand. I was laughing because I was like, yes, I got these motherfuckers. 100%. Ain't nobody on what I'm on. Y'all think I'm crazy. Y'all lost. By the time y'all catch up, I'm going to be out of here. I'm like, yes, I got you. Everybody's lost because everybody wanted to be cool. See, let me explain something to you. I realized something more than anything if I didn't realize nothing is that for me growing up, a lot of people ain't see these movies. I'm looking at Steve. I'm looking at... I'm looking at Bill. I'm looking at all the great people. Everybody's making some great stuff. I'm looking at Kanye's. I'm looking at different people. And I'm saying... Oh, y'all don't even understand. Right now is Revenge of the Nerds. It's over, guys. All that cool shit, 
You can't monetize cool. It's only momentarily. It's a feeling, it's a, it's a moment, it's a party, it's a song, but it's not, it's not every day. It's not going to be that everyday thing because once you go to the party, once you go to the event, once you shoot the video, once you go to the club, the cool die right there. It's, now you gotta it's get levels. You, to the work. It's you levels. gotta get to the real grind. You gotta get to the real dedication, and you gotta be able to execute in this world in order to win. All that other shit in it, the thinkers run the world. The people that's gonna think, the people that's gonna sit, the people that's gonna create, they're gonna win. Everybody else is gonna be sent back to me. Oh, I'm cool. I'm partying. I was here. Okay, you took a picture, and now the picture is over. It's over. You did all that shit. The build up. You said, let me go get these clothes. Let me go to this club. Let me drink this liquor. Let me take these pictures. And then the next morning you wake up hammered and it was over. It was all for a picture. And then you got people out here that are sitting back utilizing people, these illusionary lifestyles, and utilizing them as measuring sticks on social media to say, oh, my life ain't nothing. That was a one-second picture, dog. That might not even be his Lamborghini. Like, you could just go anywhere and rent cars. You can rent the, cars. The, 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 the bigger question is, why are you using other people's lives yeah. as a validation point to your own? Yep. Like, I'm telling y'all, right now we are putting youth on a pedestal. These young kids, they know technology better. On some Nana shit, let's just do it right here. We have to get back to respecting our elders. Yes. On some real talk, we're shitting on people because of technology now that lived life. Yeah. Like, I can sense that we're about to get back to it a little bit. I think if everybody spent a little less time looking at 20 year olds making paper and spent a couple more hours with their grandparents or their grandparents' friends, even better if it's not your family because it's not as loaded, you know? People are just confused. Like, again, the thought that you have, like, blaming people, like, I love when people are like, it's all the celebrities' faults. I'm like, don't watch them. Where's the accountability? If you feel that you're depressed because celebrities are flexing on social media, don't consume social media. And start, and start subscribing and start paying attention to the people that's in our families, the elders in our communities that really done it, day one. Because I was talking to my grandma and this is the classic most things she What's said. What's her name? Her name is Lois Peoples, Nanny. So Nanny, I'm talking to Nanny, she's 89 years old, right? Nanny said... Can we get Nanny on the podcast? Yeah. I don't know, man. Nanny don't like the camera. She don't like the digital stuff. Nanny, <laughs> can you just be behind the scenes and just talk? I just want she to gonna hear tell the fucking some, wisdom. She gonna tell it. And I just want the fucking listen, wisdom. I'm gonna tell you this type of wisdom. I get I it. I called her one time. Nanny, what's going on? I said, where you at? She said, I'm downtown. I said, okay, you downtown. <laughs> I said, you drive? Doing said, what? Nanny tied New Balances up and she would jump on the train and go downtown and, don't, and leave a car park. So I say, Nanny, did you drive? I always ask her, did you drive? She said, no, why am I drive? I caught the train. I'm the, so. Later on, I, I talked to her. I said, "Damn, man, you gotta stay. you keep you know being anywhere." <laughs> Calm she said, down. She said, "She said, she said, Wallace, let me tell you something. If you stop moving, you stop moving, baby." He said, "All my friends that stop moving, he stopped dead." Moving. She never stopped moving. That was the most powerful wisdom. Is I mean, it was just powerful. I believe it. And, and because I never looked at when I looked at the neighborhood. When I looked at, it, I'm like, you're the oldest in your church. You're the oldest living member, and around the neighborhood, you're the oldest living living person in our whole community. Because Nanny always tied her sneaks up. And we'll go for She messed with New Balances? Yeah, yeah. She, she messed with, she messed, she wear New Balances, all type of, and she'd just be out of here. She'd be like, she'd be like, oh, all right. I'd be like, where you at, Nanny? Oh, I'm down, what's the name? I'm at the farmer's market. Did you bring your car? Nope. I caught this. And she just like, she just, she'd keep moving. So it's like, you said something that's very important. We got to start subscribing to the people that already won in life. She won already. She's a winner. I know what every 21 year old influencer on social media is doing. Mm -hmm. They're playing high school. They're just trying to win clout. Yeah. Like, by the way, I understand. I think it's a piece of life. I understand how people do that, but I know what they're all doing. Mm -hmm. And by the way, they can't help it. They're 21. What are we asking them for? They're children. Yep. This is when people get mad at all these players, like, that kid fucked up. Yeah. Like, that kid's 19. The f are you doing at 19? Yeah. I love when all my boys talk sports in our sports threads, like, ah, Ja fucked up. I'm like, bro, I know you at 19. I you, you were way worse. Yeah. And you didn't have the world looking at you or 250 million in the bank, mother yeah. And you were more fucked up. Shut your mouth. Yeah, but like, you did worse. The hypocrisy. These kids are children. Which goes back to the point. We're putting youth on a pedestal. Everybody, all of us trying to do this and Ozempic that and surgery. Everyone wants to be 20. I get it. Life is like fun. It's nice to be youthful. I get it. But we've got it. So You know, everything's best at balance. We used to disrespect kids. 
when we came up the game, when you were 22 and got a new yeah. job, you gotta get coffee, you can't do anything else, you can't talk. These 22 year olds walk into the company, they think they should be the vice president day one I, of the company. I get it, I know what's happening, but that's on us. We've put youth too, and I with youth heavy. Yeah. But we've lost our balance. We put them on a pedestal just because they know how to use a iPhone. And we've completely, I mean the collective disrespect that society right now has for 75 to 100 year olds without understanding or acknowledging this deep wisdom, the battle scars of living life, the mistakes that they've learned from, the place where they actually don't give a anymore. When you're 90, you're kind of not giving a what people think about your fit. No, you don't care about that You know that what I mean? Shit. And so, I just think we need to tap the fuck in way more, way more to wisdom. And so when I roll, when I move, when I, like when I'm in life, walking the street, like especially at the airport is where I historically used to do it, like just sitting down next to somebody, like I would literally be like, oh, there's a seat next to a 90 year old. I'd sit down and like remember, because we've disrespected the elderly, they're thrilled when you engage. They, they, they're the best they're teachers. Fu- they're the they best. Tell you I'm like, yo, you know, and like they, they're thrilled and they will engage and they will drop real wisdom and I promise you the average 88 year old at the airport in 15 minutes will give you more shit than your stream will give you all year. Why you don't, why you don't fly uh, private jets? I do sometimes and I do more now. You know, I held off because I never, like the mistakes I make is I'm too back to balance. My vulnerability is back to like not wanting to be two minutes late. I'm so associate of where I came from that I always viewed it as like, I'm a sellout. That's bougie. You know, like I hate when people flex those kind of things because I don't think that brings value to people on social. Like it just makes, like, oh no Gary, it's inspiring. No it's not. It's making them feel shitty, back to your point. Like what are you contributing taking a selfie? Like, so I kind of demonized it. The reality is, in the last three or four years, my time has become so valuable yeah. that it's just good math for me now. Like, it's, it's crazy to me that I'm in a place where I can afford a flight like that. But if I don't and I do the commercial thing, I'm gonna lose. Like, what the fuck am I? Who, you know, it becomes this thing where you start realizing if you're gonna preach all the shit you're preaching right here, you gotta hold yourself accountable. Yeah. I'm like, who am I proving this shit to? I'm playing this stupid game with myself of me holding on, of not like going there. Mm-hmm. Meanwhile, I'm just hurting myself. Nobody's winning, my body's not winning. My health, mm-hmm. my re- like, I'm, I'm not flexing it anyway. So nobody really. I, I even felt uncomfortable even jumping. I'm sad that you just asked that because I don't even really want to go there. But it's just I do now. But I'll mix it up. Mm-hmm. Flight on Friday to LA, commercial. Let me ask you a question, uh, and 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 this is a very important question that people need to know. How old would you, and do you remember the moment where your fucking button came on, where you didn't give a? I more? hate this question because it's the right question. Yeah. But again, this is where, I, I hate using me because, I, and I hate using luck, I said early why, but man, fuck. Between the DNA I was gifted when my mom and dad decided to have sex that night in 1975, February on their wedding night. I was, I was born nine months a day of my parents' wedding night. Damn. Yeah, my dad was 21, my, dad, my mom was 20. That's what happens, you know, back in the old country. Between the DNA that I got from my parents, which, me and my siblings always laugh that like I took the best attributes from both of them. Like I really got it like that, that's luck. That wasn't me, that was, the, that was them, that moment. Between my mom, the way she parented me. So it's not just, you know, it's nature and nurture, right? It's not only between the fact that I, that like my earliest memories are living in Queens in a studio apartment the size of this with eight family members, but being happy. So I grew up with so little, but I was so happy, I learned by the time I was eight or nine, that happiness was not associated with money. And then by not, grab that Tyler, report card top, tippy top, check this out. So I'm setting up your answer, my guy. This is my report card from high school. Wallow, educate the, yeah bro. It's speech or D? Speech, I'm one a of the D. most highly paid public speakers a in the D. world. A D, you had a D. I got D. a D in speech. Give it to Wallow. English, Tyler. English, a D. D. German, you got an F. F. Health, you got a D. Health, no, you just have to show up. Still listen. got a D. Health, you got a D. But physical education, you got an A. Freshman year, what about sophomore year? You got an A in physical education again. And, the, and junior year? 
You got an A in physical education. And senior year? You got an A in physical health. You got an A in health. You came back. I came you back. You got a B in film. You got a B in film. I mean, you got a, a, a D in film concepts. <laughs> Criminal justice, you got a C. I cared about it. Reform Alliance, what's up? Yes. Yo, check this out. Four years. Look Dang. at my GPA. 1.67. Look at my class rank. 243. Out of? 254. God damn. My man, when I tell you my give no fucks button got pressed in about fourth grade where I decided none of the opinions of the girls that I thought were cute and the guys that I thought were cool, nor my teachers, nor my report card had any indication on what was I about and I have no clue how that happened because if I did, I'd package it and sell it to everyone on earth because the last 40 years of my life or 37 if we're gonna be exact on the timing have been very joyous because I tuned everyone out. Everyone. Tune all the boys. When you go through high school and you actually don't feel peer pressure, and I knew it was happening because I felt it, but when I got a little bit older and understand life a little more, I'm like, yo, that mentality is crazy. Like when the girl that you think is the hottest, the hottest, is like, hey, you want to hang out this Saturday? And you're like, no, I'm doing a baseball card show. Like you're in a, you're like, you're weird. Yeah. I was just in such a weird place. Like big, come in Monday morning, everyone's talking about the biggest high school party. I didn't even know. And I was popular, like really, cause I'm so like, and I like people. I knew, every, I was good like that. But I was so like this, that I come in Monday morning and be like, everyone's going crazy. Like Shane Madding, big shout out Shane. Threw up on Kate Crowley and like, oh, people going crazy. I didn't even know the party was going down and I was friends with everyone there and they probably told me, but I was like this Saturday at the Phillipsburg Mall, I'm gonna sell those Ken Griffey Jr. rookie cards Mm. that I popped off from the kid. Like I was so, the only thing I ever gave a about was the market, the world. I give so much about what's going on behind this camera right now, Mm. but equally I don't. And that's the magic. The reason I can be a public figure I've realized now why I keep, moving is I don't see, when when I post something, all those goat emojis, I don't believe them. I don't think I'm special. I'm aware of what I got. Not delusion, I'm not trying to, but but all those goat emojis, and I get plenty of them, thank God, thank you, I don't believe them, which sets me up for when someone says, yo, fuck you. I don't believe them either. The mistake everyone's making right now in society is you want the accolades, you Live for the accolades. You eat those accolades up. Mm-hmm. But when the f- booing comes, you're broke mm-hmm. because you thought the cheering was right. And I'm just f- calm. I'm in the f- middle. I'm wishing well for f- all of y'all. But I'm just on my sh- and I want good for everyone else. And when I see somebody doing it bigger than me, I'm pumped. When I saw you doing your thing, like, I'm just happy for everyone because everyone can eat. Mm-hmm. The, the second I know someone can't win is the second they start telling me that someone else is eating their food. Damn. I'm like, you're done. You're telling me you can't be on the top of the charts because of Drake? The f are you talking about? Mm-hmm. The f are you talking about? Make good music. Like, then Ice Spice couldn't happen. Because Meg the Stallion happened, but Meg couldn't happen because Cardi happened. But wait, Cardi couldn't happen because Nikki happened. Like oh. enough of this bullshit. My friends, once and for all, you want to be happier? Start realizing that everything that isn't working is on you. Ain't no one taking your shit. And the second you go there, it's game over. Now you're on like, oh wait, I can do it. Because if you think LeBron is f-ing you up, then it's over. You think he took your spot? You think no other black man can be motivational? Yeah. What the fuck are you talking about? Yep. Enough of this shit. There's unlimited, unlimited opportunity, but people aren't accountable. I always say if somebody in the world has made it, aka happy and successful, that had your circumstances, your excuse is void. There's no rap. My mom is the greatest mom that ever lived. I respect that other people could tie her if you feel that way about your moms. My mom lost her mom at five. Grew up in the Soviet Union. Like the 
place on earth, the North Korea of the time. We couldn't leave the country. Her dad then goes to jail for 10 years when she's 10. She figured it the fuck out. Mm. So like, I don't know, like people are just always trying to explain to me why not. I'm just like, the second you, like my favorite thing about life, when people are like the algorithm, social, right? The algorithms are so negative. I'm like, cause you're negative. Come look at my algorithm. Jets football, a cat being saved out of a tree by a fireman, my shit's fucking beautiful. Because I'm not willing to let negative, you find what you're looking for in life. If you're hurt, you're looking for bad shit. anti stuff black, you're just spending all your time because they're yeah. trying to, the world's trying to sell you fear. Yeah, That's they how they fear control sells. you. Yep. You get to decide. In life, I can go on the internet right now and in five seconds show you 50 things that are phenomenal. I can go to Google, happy news, enter, news, boom, 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 boom. Or I could show you 50 things that are terrible. Conflict in the Middle East, race in America. Uh, the, this 20, I mean, do you know how on tilt America's gonna be this year? Mm-hmm. Do you know how much I'm not looking forward to 2024? Just get me to January 25. Watching all of y'all beat each other up, trying to convince each other to see the world exactly how you see it because of the way you grew up, it's exhausting. No compassion, no empathy, no capacity to understand why someone would see. If you grew up in a deeply religious home in the South, I understand how you might have different opinions about religion and abortion. I get it. The same way that I grew up and went to Martin Luther King Elementary School with an insane amount of diversity, so I see it different. We're allowed. But right now we're like, no, I'm right, you're wrong, and we're just fighting and fighting and fighting and fighting and negative and negative and negative and like, I'm just in the cut trying to put out positivity and being empathetic, like I can't control everybody's outcomes, so I'm just gonna leave the deposits of good, hopefully some people will take it and run. Just live life. That's what I'm talking about, man. Gary V, man, where's Wildo, man? I appreciate you, brother. I love you, bro. Cheering listen, for you heavy. Listen, this is the information, man. Check us out. Where's Wildo? Gary V. And it's just like that.